for women with an abnormal mammogram, microcalcifications are a common finding for which a breast biopsy is indicated. Microcalcifications are tiny flecks of calcium that become concerning when they are present in a small cluster or a grouping. Um, the reasons for this are, are many, but the diagnoses that can result when a cluster of microcalcifications undergoes biopsy can include breast cancer, it can include carcinoma in situ, and it can also include a condition called atypical hyperplasia. And that's what this video is about. Atypical hyperplasia comes in two forms. First, atypical ductal hyperplasia, which arises from the cells that line the tubes or ducts that conduct milk from where it is made in lobules to the nipple. The other form of hyperplasia is called atypical lobular hyperplasia, and this derives from cells which line the lobules or the terminals of the breast ductal system where milk is made before being conveyed to the nipple through the ducts. This is all on very much a microscopic scale. What is true of both forms of atypical hyperplasia is that they both signal that the patient is at elevated risk for breast cancer, but in different ways. Atypical ductal hyperplasia is a risk factor for breast cancer, and it generally means that the patient's risk for getting breast cancer at some point is increased about fourfold, which is not insignificant. Furthermore, for patients with atypical ductal hyperplasia, it is generally recommended that when atypical ductal hyperplasia is found on a needle biopsy of the breast for calcifications, that a surgical biopsy be performed in the same area. A surgical biopsy is often called an excisional biopsy, and that is done to be certain that a bigger problem adjacent to the core needle biopsy is not present. Such a problem would be either ductal carcinoma in situ or even a small invasive ductal carcinoma or a real breast cancer. Lobular hyperplasia or atypical lobular hyperplasia is different from atypical ductal hyperplasia in that even though it confers a risk for breast cancer, that risk is lower, uh, something on the order of 2% per year for the affected patient, and the risk is not as anatomically related. In other words, the risk is there for both breasts in equal measure. An additional difference between atypical lobular hyperplasia and atypical ductal hyperplasia is that for women with atypical lobular hyperplasia seen on core biopsy, they do not always require surgical or excisional biopsy because the risk of an adjacent cancer or other precancerous condition in the setting of atypical lobular carcinoma is much lower.